do. How can the Christian Bible be trusted when a totally, totally <laughs> invented tradition of Rome, the releasing of one prisoner during the Passover feast, much less a murderer from an insurrection, Mark 15, 6 to 11, was deceitfully added by an unknown person, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, not a textual variant. Uh, here, the um, uh, accusation is that there is no evidence for the tradition referred to in regards to the releasing of Barabbas. Uh, once again, we have very lit we have almost nothing outside of the Gospels themselves that gives us almost any first century insight into what was going on in Jerusalem at this time at all, uh, especially in regards to the actions of Pilate. Um, so this is just simply saying, well, I don't accept what Mark has to say, and there's no other evidence for it, so therefore I reject it. That's all it is. That's, that's, the, that's the essence of this. Which would mean you have to reject almost every historical reference in the Old Testament, because we're talking about a much more, much more ancient record, and hence you have less and less and less corresponding evidence outside of it, because the farther back in time you go, the less you've got of recorded documents. Uh, that's why you have to do so much archaeology, but you have to interpret archaeology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Number 10, how can the Christian Bible trust it? When the very words of Jesus himself, Mark 12, 26, have been deceitfully removed by an unknown person, uh, the NIV from the KJV, which is, I think this is the one that I said earlier, uh, or was that Luke, the Luke 9.55 one? Um, uh, let me see if... Uh, let, me, let me check this one. Um, there was one of them I could not find. I thought it was Luke 9.55. Yeah, no, this is, I think this is the one. Maybe I should go back to the 9.55 one. Don't have time for it now. Um, yeah, I saw... Th yeah, this is the one. So I see... I checked the NAV Study Bible. Um, there's no... There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Uh, so I don't get it. Uh, I don't. I, I don't get it. So maybe it is the. Uh, let me let me go back to Luke nine fifty five, because uh, one of the two. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay, Luke nine fifty five one. Sorry, there is a textual variant. Luke nine fifty five. Yay! There's finally one there. Um, and Luke nine fifty five one is uh, the. Uh, here here's what it is in the NASB. Uh, that but he turned and rebuked them, comma. Now, lengthy edition in some manuscripts, later Byzantine manuscripts, and said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them, continuing on, and they went on to another village. So that section, and said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them, is found um, in Family One, in uh, basically looking at this, this is a... Family 1 and 13, this is a specific um, portion of what we would historically call the Byzantine manuscripts. Uh, there are only a couple of unseals, uh, K, Gamma, Theta, uh, that have it. Families 1 and 13. A few others, there's a couple of versions of the, of the Vulgate, uh, like the Clementine, uh, Syriac, uh, Heraclean, Boharic, part of the Boharic. So there's a couple early translations, relatively early translations. Uh, but it's a fairly narrow spectrum on the, um, on the manuscripts. There's, there's no early papyri support or anything in the major unseals as far as that is concerned. Um, so it's a textual variant. So I suppose the argument is if there are textual variants, you can't trust the Bible. We've been through that one enough times to have responded to it many, many times. So it was the Mark 12, 26 one. I don't even know what they're referring to. So maybe it's been uh, mistyped. Uh, just a couple more. How can the Christian Bible be trusted when the very words of Jesus himself, Matthew 6, 13, second half, were deceitfully added by that fa now famous uh, deceitful unknown person? <laughs> Sorry. It does get a little old. What? Deceitful, deceitful unknown person? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, what he's referring to here is the long um, uh, epigraph or blessing found on the Lord's, uh, uh, the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then you have in the Byzantine manuscript especially, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
and Luke doesn't have that, and the uh, Nassion 28th edition also uh, does not have the, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for every man. And even though I'm well aware of that textual variant, um, when we quote the Lord's Prayer, we still use it anyways, because it's, it's nice. Um, but again, it uh, has nothing to do with being deceitful uh, or anything else. It's a textual variant. Ooh, font got real small. Oh, there it just blew up nicely. Um, real quickly here, Matthew 2.23. I'm just not going to bother to read them anymore because it's all the same thing about deceitful people. This is the he shall be called a Nazarene thing. A um, uh, couple pages that you might read in uh, Michael Brown's material on this particular subject. Any commentary is going to discuss the, the term Natser branch. Does that have to do with Isaiah 11? The branch shall come forth. You really have to deal with Matthew's Pesher interpretation methodology and, and things like that to deal with that. Uh, but again, it's it's not a um, nothing has been added or deleted. There's not there's no textual variant at that particular point. Um, yeah, th then you've got uh, Hebrews eight nine. Uh, the new covenant was deceitfully misquoted by an unknown person to suggest that God had turned from or rejected the Jews. And this is, this is the quotation of, though I did not care for them versus though I was a husband to them. This actually exists in the Hebrew manuscripts. Evidently, this person is unaware of that reality. This is the difference between Baal and Gaal, uh, the difference between Beit and, and Gimel. Uh, they're formed differently, but they can still be confused with one another. And the um, New Testament is quoting from the Greek Septuagint at that point, which, which has did not care for them uh, over against um, the um, reading of Baal among, in the most of the um, Masoretic uh, manuscripts. Number 14, um, oh, the 30 pieces of silver. Oh, this is, okay, Matthew 27, 9, uh, here, uh, was deceitfully added by an unknown person specific to the 30 pieces of silver supposedly noted by the prophet Jeremiah, when in fact there is nothing in the book of Jeremiah about any 30 pieces of silver. Uh, this is one we, again, we have talked about before, but this could be useful to folks. So if you've turn, tuned out, wake up for just a second, because I've only got one after this anyways. Um, and uh, that is, uh, then that which was spoken through Jeremiah, the prophet was fulfilled, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one whose price had been set by the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord uh, directed me. And so what you have uh, in this particular uh, citation is from Zechariah chapter 11, and in all probability what this is is a difference in the mechanism of citation when people were using scrolls. You cited the major prophet in the particular scroll that was being used, um, not the minor prophets. And so it was probably just a different way. You know, we, we assume people had codex-style books like we have, and each book was freestanding and had thumb indexing and that didn't have any of that kind of stuff. Um, and so uh, this is a, a, there are a number of places in the New Testament where major prophets are cited rather than minor prophets. It's not like anyone didn't know how to find Zechariah eventually, um, but this is a citation differentiation. 